Welcome back my AP Calc champions. In this problem, we're going to be talking about this curve. So problem six says, consider the curve given by the equation six times x times y is equal to two plus y cubed. So the first problem says, show that dy over dx is equal to two times y over y squared minus two x. Okay, so basically we're being given what we need to end up with and we're being given what we need to start off with and we just need to show the steps in between. So hopefully this is a good indicator that your dy over dx should look like this. So if you have something that doesn't look like that, I think you might have made a mistake at some point. So you can go back and take a look at your math again. So let's go ahead and start off with our 6xy is equal to 2 plus y cubed. We're going to be taking the derivative with respect to x. So what this means is for this first chunk where we're taking the derivative and we're going to be using the product rule, anytime we see an x and we take the derivative, it's just going to end up being dx over dx, which is just going to be 1, um, versus our y is going to be in the form dy over dx, okay? So with the product rule, I'm sort of chunking it, I'm putting it into two chunks, 6x and y. So when we take the derivative of 6x, we're just going to get 6 because we're going to get dx over dx. That's just going to be 1. And then we're going to multiply it by our y. So we're not taking the derivative of that side. Then we're going to keep our 6x the same. And we're going to take the derivative of our y. Remember what I said. This is now going to be dy over dx. And then we need to take the derivative of the other side. The 2 just goes away. Derivative of a constant is just going to be 0. Then we're going to take the derivative of our y cubed. So this is going to be 3y squared. And then you might think that we're done, but we actually have this inner y function inside. So we're going to be using our chain rule, and we're going to be multiplying by dy over dx again. Okay, so now we have uh, some dy over dx values, which is all good because we actually want it in our final answer. So it's good that we have them now. So I would say we can go ahead and simplify this by dividing everything by 3, right? So we have a 6y, a 6x times dy over dx, and then we have 3y squared times dy over dx. So let's go ahead and just divide everything by 3. So we have a 2, a 2, and then this just ends up being a 1. So now we want to get the dy over dx over on one side. So let's go ahead and subtract 2x times dy over dx from both sides. So we're going to get... 2y squared times dy over dx minus 2x dy over dx. And then we can go ahead and factor out the dy over dx. So we're going to end up with y squared minus 2x in parentheses. Remember, because we just factored it out. So to get from this to this, we would just distribute the dy over dx. But we want to factor it out on itself. And then we can divide both sides by y squared minus 2x. So we get 2y divided by y squared minus 2x, which is equal to dy over dx. And lucky for us, that is exactly what we were trying to show. That's the answer to part A. Let's move on to part B. This one says, find the coordinates of a point on the curve at which the line tangent to the curve is horizontal or explain why no such point exists. So the line tangent to the curve is horizontal. What we're looking for is something like this. Um, and you can kind of think of this as when dy over dx is equal to zero or when the slope is equal to zero. Uh, we're not going up any, we're not going across any, our slope is zero. Okay, so we have this handy dandy dy over dx equation set up for us. So we can go ahead and set zero equal to two y over y squared minus two x. And then we can go ahead and try to solve for either y or x. So it looks like if we multiply both sides by y squared minus 2x, we're going to get uh, y squared minus 2x times 0 is going to be 0. So we're going to get 0 is equal to 2y. So we can solve for y here, right? When we multiply by 2 to get 0, it can only be 0. So now we have a value that we can use, and we can go ahead and try plugging it into this equation here to try to solve for our x. So we get 6 times x times y is equal to 2 plus y cubed. So we're plugging in y equals 0 into this. So 6 times x times 0 is equal to 2 plus 0 cubed. So on the left side, this whole thing is just going to become 0 because we're multiplying 6 times x times 0. So we get 0 is equal to 2 plus 0 cubed. So we're going to get 0 is equal to 2. Um, this is false. 0 is not equal to 2. Uh, which means that there isn't actually a point such that the line is horizontal tangent to the curve. 
this this point does not exist because so what were we trying to solve for when we were plugging in zero into this equation we we're trying to find a point at which y was equal to zero but we weren't able to find it because we ended up getting an equation that we couldn't solve for so this point does not exist because there doesn't exist a point where y is equal to zero. And that should be our answer for part b. Let's go ahead and move on to part c. This one says, find the coordinates of a point on a curve at which the line tangent to the curve is vertical or explain why such a point does not exist. Okay, so uh, a vertical curve, we're gonna be looking for something like this. And this is essentially where dy over dx is undefined. So this would happen um, maybe if something was zero over zero or infinity over infinity. We're trying to find a form like this or maybe even just any number divided by zero, right? Because remember, you cannot divide by zero. You're gonna get not a number. So how, how might we solve for that given our dy over dx? Well, pretty nice. We have a denominator that we're dividing by. So y squared minus two x. We can go ahead and set that equal to zero and solve. Then we'll be dividing by zero and we'll have an indeterminate form. So zero is equal to y squared minus two x. So let's go ahead and solve for that. So add 2x to both sides, 2x is equal to y squared. I think it would be simpler for if we solve for x in terms of y rather than the other way around because we're going to have a square root if we solve for y. So let's divide both sides by 2. So y squared minus 2 is equal to x. So now we have x in terms of y. So we can go ahead and plug that into this equation and see if we can solve for a number. So everywhere we see in x, we're going to substitute y squared divided by 2. So 6 times y squared divided by 2 times y is equal to 2 plus y cubed. So we're going to get that this is going to be 3y squared and then times another y. So y cubed is equal to 2 plus y cubed. We can subtract y cubed from both sides. So y cubed, 2y cubed is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 2. y cubed is equal to 1. So then y is going to be the cube root of 1, which is just going to be 1. So now that we have y, we can go ahead and plug that into plug that into here to solve for x. So we get x is equal to 1 squared divided by 2, which is 1 half. Now we have actually successfully found a point at which the tangent line is vertical, so at which dy over dx is undefined. So that point would be 1 half comma 1. Okay. Um, and if you wanted to check, if you don't believe me that the tangent line is vertical because dy over dx is undefined, we can go ahead and solve for it. So dy over dx is, what is it, 2y over y squared minus 2x. So if we're plugging in 1 half for x, 1 for y, so 2 times 1 over 1 squared minus 2 times 1 half, we're going to get 2 over 0. We're dividing by 0. That's not something that we can do. So we have successfully found a point at which the tangent line is vertical. All right, so let's move on to part D. This says a particle is moving along the curve at the instant when the particle is at the point 1 half comma negative 2. Its horizontal position is increased at a rate of is increasing at a rate of dx over dt is equal to two-thirds unit per second. What is the value of dy over dt? The rate of change of the particle's vertical position at that instant. What we're going to be doing in this problem is we're going to be taking this function and we're going to be differentiating with respect to time this, this time around. Remember with the first problem, we were going from this to this, but we were differentiating with respect to x. This time we're doing some related rates and we are going to be differentiating with respect to time. So every time we see a dx and we take the derivative of that and if it's just an x it's going to be dx dt and the same goes for y where if we're taking the derivative and it's just a y it's going to now be dy dt so we want it in terms of dx dt and dy dt so that we can actually solve for dy dt which is the rate of change of the particle's vertical position and we should be able to use this point and dx over dt to solve for dy over dt Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So we are starting off with 6 times x times y is equal to 2 plus y cubed. So then we want to differentiate the left side of the equation again using product rule. So if I'm looking at this as one part and this as another part, if I'm going to differentiate 6x with respect to time, it's now going to be 6dx 
over dt, and then we multiply by y, right, remember product rule, plus we're going to keep 6x the same this time, and now we're going to differentiate our y, so that's going to be dy over dt is equal to, if we take the derivative of 2, that's just going to be 0, we have to differentiate our y cubed, so the 3 is going to come down, it's going to be 3y squared, and then we uh, need to differentiate the inner function as it was. So now we have another dy over dt. Okay, so now we have everything in terms of either x, y, dx, dt, or dy over dt, and that's perfect. So now the only uh, number that we don't know is dy over dt, but we know what x is, right? x is going to be this 1 half, y is going to be the minus 2 from that same point, and then dx over dt is going to be 2 thirds unit per second. So we're just solving for dy over dt. So let's go ahead and plug all that in. So 6 times 2 thirds times minus 2 plus 6 times x, so 1 half times dy over dt. We don't know that yet, so actually that's going to stay dy over dt is equal to 3 times minus 2 squared dy over dt. Okay, so let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. So we're going to get that this is going to be a 2, a 1. So 2 times 2 times minus 2 is going to be minus 8 plus 3 dy over dt is equal to, let's see, we have negative 2 squared, 4. 4 times 3 is 12, so 12 dy over dt. Um, we can go ahead and subtract 3y dt from both sides. So we get negative 8 is equal to 9 dy over dt. And then once again, we're just trying to solve for our dy dt. So we divide both sides by 9. We get negative 8 over 9 is equal to dy over dt. Okay, and so um, that's our answer. If we wanted to add some units, it would be in units per second. Okay. Uh, why is it in units per second? Well, our dx over dt, which is the horizontal position's rate of change, was in units per second. So our rate of change of the vertical position should also be in units per second. So that is our answer for part D. Hopefully this helps you out with these AP calculus problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.